Good evening, everyone. I trust Amen. you all. Good evening, have a good Ruth. And nice to hear people's voices. I trust you've all had a blessed day. And we are grateful that you are able to meet here this evening and fellowship together. This week is the Children's Ministry Week, and the theme is going forth. And today we'll be going forth into the ark. Our speaker is Dennis. But before we continue, we'll have Joy open the meeting with a word of prayer and an opening song. Joy. Let's pray. Our dear Father in heaven, you can be for this day, thankful hearts of Father. I was about to start this session. May you help you to be successful. May you help us to learn and to put it into practice, oh Father. This is my humble prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Joy, you can pass um, the opening song. Uh, the song is from, it's hymn 538, Guide Me, O the Great Jehovah. Yeah. Thank you, Joy and family, for the beautiful singing, and we trust that God will guide us as we are going forth. So our key text, children, wherever you are, please have your Bible. When we come to worship, we come to, from the word of God. So let's all have our Bibles. Do you love our Bibles? Good. The book of Psalms, that's in the Old Testament, the longest book. We go to the book of Psalms. Psalms, the one and 19th chapter. So Psalms chapter 119. Are we all there? Psalms 119, verse 10. So I'll give us a few minutes to find it. Psalms 119, verse 10. Have we all found it wherever we are with our Bible? And it says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I'll read a little bit slower for those who have not yet opened. It's Psalms chapter 119. children encourage us during the week to memorize this verse it will be our verse for the entire week so every day let's go through it and memorize it and now we'll have our speaker share with us dennis you're welcome thank you very much teacher ruth for leading us through until this point as it has been said before my name is dennis and yeah, that's my official name, Dennis Bichanga, son to Irene Bichanga. My unofficial name is DJ, uh, meaning Don Jr. Don is my father. So it's, it's a privilege to have this opportunity again that we may share through the word and learn from each other. And we thank God for it. So before I start, I would like us to have another word of prayer. Dear Master, we invite you and your Holy Spirit to lead us now until the end that we may walk away from here, having learned and listened from you. And this is my prayer to Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. So as you have been told, our theme for this week, as the children's week, is go forth, going forth. And our main focus is going to be from the story of Noah, Noah the patriarch. And we have a lot in store for us to learn, and I hope that we will have learned something. So before I get into the story of Noah, I'd like us to take some analogy. Uh, I know during this time of the pandemic, we have been forced to, to go online as we are now online. And we have been using computers and phones 
and tablets and all of this stuff. And I'm sure that most of you have heard of a virus. Apart from the coronavirus, there's another virus that affects computers. And so I'd like us to look at computer viruses. I'm sure when using one of these computer devices, there has been some time that the, you've been using it and then the computer prompts you and tells you your phone has a virus. And now you're like, what am I supposed to do? And it tells you that the virus in your phone has corrupted some files. And the antivirus tells you that we're supposed to delete those files so that your phone can be safe from the virus. Because if you don't delete the virus from the phone, it's going to affect the whole phone and you won't be able to use it again, the phone or the computer or the tablet. So the, 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 the thing that the phone, the solution that the phone gives you is that for those corrupted files, they're supposed to be deleted and it will help you delete it. Why? Because they are corrupted. They have viruses inside. And so you go ahead and accept. But what happens if these corrupted files, one of these corrupted files are the ones that contain your school documents and your assignments that you've done. And now these are the same files that uh, you have to delete because they are corrupted and they have a virus. So because of the whole phone, because you want to save the whole phone, you'll have to sacrifice and say, although I've worked on this assignment and I've, I've saved these documents here, but because they are corrupted, because they have viruses, I'll accept and delete them. So you'll, you'll have to delete them for the greater good to save the whole phone, that the phone may continue working well. And that is the same, that is the analogy I would like us to go through with as we learn from the book of Genesis and the story of the patriarch Noah. So uh, I hope you have your Bibles close to you because we'll be reading some verses and from there we'll learn from it. So the first verse we're going to read is Genesis chapter six, verse one. And the Bible says, I'm reading from the New King James Version, Genesis chapter six, verse one. I hope you are there. And the Bible reads, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. So this is a stage where after Adam and Adam's children and Adam's children's children, and so forth and so on, people began to multiply and people became many on the face of the earth, but the earth was filled with people. And that's what the verse is telling us. Now I'd like us to skip to verse four. And it says, there were giants on the earth in those days. And afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they brought children to them, there were mighty men who were of old, men of renown. The Bible says those days that there were giants. Wow, isn't that nice? But that's a story for another day about the story of the giants. But now we will have to proceed to verse 5 and 6. What does verse 5 and 6 say? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6 says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of, his, of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So this is a sad point, very sad point in creation. And if you could remember after creation, we, we see that in the book of Genesis chapter one, the last verse, the Lord says that, and he saw all that he made and it, behold, it was very good. So when we were reciting 
the, the days of creation and what was, were created, at the end of each verse, we were saying, and behold, it was good, and behold, it was good. And when creation was over, the Lord said, everything was very good. Everything was perfect. But now here in Genesis chapter 6, what has happened? That the Lord is sorry. The Lord is sorry that he made man on the earth. Why? Because the man is evil continually. The man has become corrupted. Like those files we were talking about in uh, our computers, the man has a certain virus, not the, not the coronavirus, but a different virus called sin. So sin has entered the earth gradually. From the time you've ate of the fruit in the garden, sin has been creeping and growing in man slowly by slowly. And we see here in Genesis, chapter six, that now sin is reaching a state where God is sorry that he made man. And the Lord now has to deal with this sin because if he does not deal with it, it will affect the whole creation. And so the Lord does something to deal with the sin Pure, purify the earth, to cleanse the earth of this virus called sin. Now, we will read from the same chapter, chapter 6, and we'll read of a man. When we continue from chapter 6, verse 7, it says, so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So when God looked at his creation, he saw that man had sinned. Man had become corrupted, but there was a man amongst the many men on the earth. There was a man called Noah and his family, whom the Lord found grace in. And on this man, the Lord pre presented some responsibilities because the Lord had decided to cleanse the earth from the corruption, from the sin, from the virus. And the first task Noah was given before building the ark, Noah was given a task of preaching to the people. And so every day, Noah would go out of his house and preach and preach and tell them that the Lord is going to cleanse the earth. The Lord is going to rid the earth of this sin. And he, there is going to be a flood coming. And the only way you could be saved is if you entered the ark that he was building. So Noah preached and preached year on, year out. Because the Lord had planned to cleanse the earth of the sin, of the virus. Because if he will not cleanse the earth, man would corrupt, sin would corrupt the whole of creation. And so Noah preached and preached and preached as he built the ark. He preached, built the ark, preached. And uh, at this point, we, we learn of faith. Because previously, uh, we are told that water wasn't raining from the heaven. Clouds are not forming in the sky and, and they're being rain. Water was coming down from the ground. That is what the people were used to. That is what Adam and Eve were used to. Water was coming from the ground. Dew that was forming, the mist that was forming on the ground was sufficient for the plants and for everything. Rain never fell from the sky. But when, Noah, when, when the Lord found grace, when Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, 
Noah was given a command and told that I am going to bring floods on the earth. And this time, rain is going to come from the sky. So I, Noah was shocked from the sky. Let's say yes, from the sky, not from the ground as you have been used. And in this, Noah acted in faith and accepted the words of the Lord and started building and preaching. So Noah's family and him believed in the words, in the commands of the Lord, and they started preaching and building the ark. And in this was the ark, this was an act of faith by Noah. And the other people were just living their lives normally. They were eating, they were drinking, but they never knew, they, they, they never believed that rain would come from the sky and floods would be there. But Noah listened from the Lord. He accepted the commands. He acted in faith and he went forth and built the ark and preached the word. So uh, as, we, as we proceed, we're still in the sixth chapter of Genesis, as that is where we're centering our study. And from verse 14, it says, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. So, and going forward, there would be instructions on how he would build the ark as you proceed in the sixth chapter of Genesis. And so Noah went, he accepted the words of the Lord in faith and went and built the ark. And after he had completed building the ark, the Lord gave him another command. And he told him that he should bring animals clean and unclean two by two into the ark. Because initially, the spaces, the room that, that, was in, that was supposed to be in the ark, the room that was in the ark was meant for human beings, the people to be saved. But the people, when they were being preached to, did not listen. And so instead, animals were given the space and since when they were instructed from God, they listened, they went into the ark. And afterwards, the flood came. We read from the book of now chapter 7, and the verses 15 and 16. And it, said, and it says, and they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. So those that entered male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. So this was right before the floods. After everyone had entered and the command was given and now it was time to cleanse the earth of the virus, of the sin, the Lord shut Noah and the animals and his family into the ark and the flood began. So after this, we find that true to the word of the Lord, the flood came, rain started pouring from heaven, clouds formed and they started pouring rain and people couldn't believe their eyes and it rained and rained and covered them. And unfortunately, everything that had the breath of life will not uh, live from there. And afterwards, the earth was cleansed from the sin. So that in brief is the story of Noah. But what are we learning from here? That the problem that the earth is facing is not man, it is sin. The virus is the problem. And 
when the uh, when the Lord comes back to cleanse the earth of the problem, let it not be found in us. And we are hoping that we could be men like Moses who found grace, men like Noah, sorry, and also Moses, men who found grace in the eyes of the Lord, that the Lord could choose us also to be bearers of his truth as we await his coming. Uh, to verify this, you will read the book of First Peter, chapter one, and the verse is nine. First Peter, no, I'm sorry, First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. And it says, but you are a chosen generation. First Peter chapter two, verse, verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are the chosen people. And just like in the times of Noah, the same thing is happening right now. As we near the end of the days, as we, are, as we near the end of the world, God is calling upon his special people to hear the word of the Lord, to accept the commands that the Lord has given us and to go forth and save the nations. Because it is through this word that we preach that men will be saved from the coming cleansing. And though in the days of Noah, the earth was cleansed by water, in our days, the earth will be cleansed by fire. But the thing being destroyed is sin. And so we are to go forth and preach that sin may not be found in us and in, the, and in man, that we may not be destroyed. So the evil that we battle this day as in the days of Noah is sin. Sin is the problem that has corrupted the earth from the time of Eve. And Jesus Christ is coming back to destroy it once and for all. And this is the message that God has chosen us, even as children, to go forth and preach in whichever way. It might be in your actions that you may be a someone to someone. And through that, you may have saved someone from the coming cleansing. So that is our sharing for today, that we may be preachers, we may accept the command just as Noah accepted. And he accepted it in faith because whatever that happened had never happened before. Rains coming from the sky was something never seen, no one could imagine, but yet it did. So even as the Lord tells us to prepare of his coming, we should accept in faith and we should go forth and do as the Lord commands. And with that, uh, I would like to hope that even as the antivirus who is Jesus Christ comes to read of the files in the earth of the virus, we may not be found as corrupted files. And that will be our sharing for today. Thank you very much. And I'd like us to end in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Master, we thank you for teaching us this evening. We ask that you may help us to accept the call to go forth, that you may be an anchor, a beacon of hope and salvation to the world ridden with sin, and that you may help us, even as children and big children,
to continue learning from you day by day. And this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dennis, for the wonderful sharing. I trust you all been blessed. Amen. God bless you too. To have our closing song, we'll have Noel, Kyla, and Matt. Noel, Kyla, and Matt, feel free to unmute and put on your video and closing song. <laughs> 